Greetings to you. My name is Tara Ravazon and I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 43. We're looking at journal titles, abstracts and keywords. So frequently when we write a journal article we get terribly excited when it's over like wow we've finished writing it and I understand that excitement and that relief. But today I'm asking that the moment you have that great moment of excitement when you finish the article, I want you to take a breath and focus on the three crucial final bits of writing a journal article. Focusing on your title, thinking about keywords and writing a cracker of an abstract. I really want you to think about these three variables because they can be transformative, not only in increasing the speed of your article through refereeing, but also enabling that research to find an audience post-publication. Now, if you get title, abstract and keywords wrong, then no matter how great your research is, readers will never find it. So I need you all to just take that breath for me and give me one last burst of energy and think about titles, abstracts and keywords and let's start with titles. Now journal websites and search engines focus heavily on a title. We all know this. When we search for a particular area, up comes the title. If the title looks good, we click it, we read it. So a title is the first moment of advertising for our research. A good title is between 10 and 12 words in length. Make sure that the key content of the paper is there. So that means, say, the species you are studying, big hi to the frog people, big hi to the lizard people, you rock. It might be the literary theory, the framework, the paradigm that you're investigating, a particular author, that's important. It may be a particular technology or platform. It may be a concept, like the political economy. So all of that should be in the title. To give you an example, I do a lot of work on third tier cities and the last five years or so I've been really branding up third tier cities, small cities and regional development to make myself into one of the world experts in that field. And I know it's working because last year uh, a journal editor and a book editor got in touch with me and said, look, we're really interested in this area. Can you please write us something on urban regional development and small cities? So if you do brand up those areas carefully in your title, you start to be known for that work. So try to make the title a summary of your work if you can. And interestingly, writing tweets is often a very good discipline to enable that succinct presentation of an idea. So there are basically three types of title. The declarative title, declarative title, that is the main findings or the conclusions of the work are straight in the title. So what you've achieved, what you've proven, that is in your title. Descriptive titles literally describe what is in the article but do not present the conclusions. And the interrogative title introduces the subject into the form of a question. Okay, so think about the audience for your work and that will often determine the type of title that you will deploy. So empirical papers often use declarative titles, descriptive titles are often found in the humanities and the interrogative, those questioning titles, come from the social sciences. But please do pick a title that suits your subject. Don't be sort of constricted or repressed by what you think the disciplinary parameters are. For example, on Friday, big hi to Teeny in the Alice. I was talking with Teeny on Friday about her fantastic work and interest in clinical assessment and storytelling. And she was saying to me, look, I find a lot of the empirical parameters around my research are limiting my creativity because I want to think about storytelling and clinical assessment. And I said to her, start to feel relaxed and enjoy building the new and innovative relationships between these paradigms. So let the subject determine the type of work that you do. Don't be too heavily bounded by old disciplinary rhythms. The key truth when thinking about titles is to keep them short. Use a colon 
to create two different types of titles. The first big punchy main title, that's got to punch through, that's your marketing device. And on the other side of the colon is the descriptive element, what the paper is about. Do not use words like novel or first time. Nobody believes you and it is a red flag for referees. But do find ways to differentiate your work from the research of others. So what makes your work significant? What makes your work different? That's what you're selling me. Also remember to use the title well because it is the first impression that you're making on referees and on your audience. So carve it out well. And if it really helps, and look, creating good titles is really difficult. If it helps, think about it as a two sentence project. So what I want you to do is just take a breath and write down for me, what does your paper study? How does it study it? And what was the change? What was the improvement? What was the result of your work? Now write that out into two maybe pretty baggy sentences. Then remove the redundant words and phrases from those two sentences. And what you have left is often the building block for a really outstanding title. Final bit of interesting research that just emerged too, a study of Cell Journal by Research Trends on Citations found that papers with question marks, so titles that used question marks in them, were cited less, and papers with colons in them were cited more. I think probably the reason for that is people already know the key question, they would like an answer to it, and the colon based title is, here's the nice big powerful intro into it, here's a bit more information, I'll take a risk and I'll read it. The key is, if something surprising emerges in your research, then put that into the title. Something surprising, straight into the title. Okay, there's our title. Let's move to our second bit of the day. Let's look at key, keywords. Now, as you can see, a keyword is literally a key into information. It supplements the title rather than replaces it. So in many ways, selecting keywords these days is the hardest task that you'll come across as a scholar because it matters more than ever. If we're interested in Google Scholar, and all of us should be, we enter Google Scholar and go into it with keywords. We use keywords to find other scholars' work. So very few people read all the work in one particular journal. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, at this time. So if you think about it these days, 10, 15 years ago, a new edition of Nature would emerge or a new edition of Theory, Culture and Society would emerge and we would read it vertically. We would read the entirety of that journal. We'd go through the contents page and read everything. Vertical reading. These days, nobody does that. Everybody reads horizontally. We put in a keyword and we read across that keyword no matter what journal it is in. So therefore keywords matter more now than ever. So how do we decide keywords? Well, the first key is to determine the disciplinary parameter in which you are working and also try and use a quirky phrase as well. I'll give you an example of this. Before Christmas, I had an article that came out and it investigated higher education studies. So one of my keywords was higher education studies. Surprise, surprise. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. But then I also wanted to use a very small, subtle and quirky keyword, which was zombie studies. So higher education studies, big, credible area, zombie studies, small and quirky, but also with dedicated followers. So the variables to consider when you're thinking through keywords is mention a particular region or climactic condition. If that's your variable, they are great keywords. So people interested in particular regions or particular climactic conditions, they will go to those keywords. Very important. If you've used a particular experimental technique or material, then please specify that. Also, the applications of your research can be a keyword. So sustainability, great. Economic efficiency, great. Regional development, better assessment. 
Also a key topic or a policy issue is a great keyword to use. So climate change or integrated curriculum. So Shani, we've talked about this a lot. If you use the, the phrase integrated curriculum, that will ensure that your research finds a North American market. So keywords matter a lot. So after keywords, let's focus on the abstract. Yes, an abstract is a summary of your journal article, but it's a very specific type of summary. What it does is it presents the significance of your research. So that's the results of your research if it's an empirical paper. It's the value of your research if it's a theoretical, philosophical or review paper. Now it must be self-contained. This is the most important advice I'm going to give you on an abstract. So in other words, do not assume the people who read the abstract will read your paper. Most won't. So it must be completely self-contained from the paper. It also must present the value of the work though, because it, again, it is advertising for the work that you are doing. It's saying, look, here's 250 words. If you like this, the whole paper is available. So an abstract is 250 words. It is one paragraph and it should appear first in your article, even though it is written last. <coughs> Thanks guys, you're doing well, hang with me. Now there are two reasons why an abstract exists. Firstly, it exists for indexing, to enable journal databases to enact a search through your work. <coughs> Therefore, keywords and key concepts in a paper should be available and should be in the abstract to be found. The second reason that an abstract exists is to increase the profile of your paper. There are millions of articles out there. Scholars have finite time. Why should they read your work? The abstract answers that question. Abstracts have five characteristics and the emphasis in these variables is different per discipline. But every abstract contains the reason why the piece was written, so why it's important, the problem that it is attempting to solve, methodology, particularly important for scientific papers, but also for some humanities papers. So I have a wonderful student, Hi Anne, who is looking at early years and early childhood education from unobtrusive research methods, innovative method, bring that forward into the abstract. <coughs> Fourthly, results should be there that is the results of the project and the results of the project are differently presented for the sciences and the humanities. Finally, and this is the crucial bit that's in the abstract, implications. How does this article add to the body of knowledge? Really powerful. So there are two types of abstracts, the informative and the descriptive. The descriptive outlines the work and that's often in existence in the humanities. Now the informative abstract substitutes for the article itself and that's most frequently used in the sciences and particularly the empirical social sciences. So a final few comments about language choice in the abstract. Use active voice. So remove might, could, should and may. Be precise short sentences. Write the abstract long and edit, 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 edit to make it short. It must present your research at its absolute best, convincing readers to take the time to commit to read your work in full. But do take that self-contained element of the abstract seriously. Don't rely on something that exists in the rest of the article to ensure the abstract makes sense. So writing abstracts for journals, it's a really great skill. It helps you in grants, it helps you in the doctorate, it also helps you in conferences as well. The skills we've talked about today, writing the title, the keywords and the abstract, are really transferable through academic life. They're really valuable skills. 
but most importantly, they provide the entree for referees into your scholarship. They see you understand the bigger project of what your research is doing. So therefore, titles, abstracts, keywords are special, edgy, innovative, clear, significant. Thanks for hanging with me this week. We've done well the throat just about held through this vlog. As always, I wish you love, light and peace. And a final quick phrase and word if I can to my dear student and wonderful student, Mick Winter. Mick, love you darling. Take care of yourself. See you soon. Tea out.